Okay, now, I've been saving this, but I'm glad you brought it up. You can buy a car right now from the dealer that does just like Model A Henry Ford's car did, or runs on both, but much more cool. The computer has two, well, multiple sets of data that it can refer to depending on how much alcohol is mixed with the gasoline. So at every 5% mixture of alcohol and gasoline, it has a different set of data to tell the engine what to do. So you can literally put on one day gasoline in the car and on another day put alcohol in the car and, 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 it, mix in the tank. and it can mix it in the tank. And there's an optical sensor that shines a light in on the fuel and depending on the color that comes back basically, it tells the car's computer how to run automatically without even thinking about it. These are called flexible fuel vehicles. You get a $2,000 tax deduction for buying one. And there are many models of many manufacturers that are made this way. And all the, almost all the various SUVs come in a flexible fuel vehicle model. Now you're thinking, that's very progressive of the car companies. It's really good of them to do that work. And they've been doing it for 10 years. You've been able to buy these cars. And you've never heard of it. Most of them are sold to government fleets, which by law, 75% of them have to run dual fuel alcohol. So you can buy those cars. They don't cost any extra over the gasoline version. But primarily, the sales are to government. They don't advertise them to you guys. You know, Is but they're there. Right now, it's all American companies and a few Japanese companies, but not our favorite Japanese companies. And Mercedes-Benz does it. Isuzu is one of the Japanese companies that have, but Toyota and Honda don't yet. So, you know, we, we have to do an aftermarket conversion on those cars. Can you run 100% alcohol on those cars? Yeah. Yeah, they work fine on 100% alcohol. Pull off the alcohol and it won't follow the car. Now, the thing is, they didn't put a lot of work into this. So they typically lose 15 or 20% miles because they haven't optimized them for alcohol. They haven't changed the engine. No, no, it's just that you can do it really well or you can do it to rule, work to rule. And what they did is they, let me back up and say why they're doing this. For every car that they make that runs dual fuel and alcohol, the sons of guns get to make a few more SUVs. So it's a way of buying pollution credits so that they can sell more SUVs. So that's why they're doing it, not because they think they want to be good citizens. So you would want to go ahead and, and even in those cases, probably, um, mess with it in between smog checks to make it get better mileage. But, but you can use them just the way they are. And the nice thing about them are is that you can put anything you want in them and go any distance, not worry if alcohol is available. Now, alcohol is available in many parts of the United States at the pump. There are 300 stations right now that have alcohol at the pump, only one in California down in San Diego. And a whole bunch of them have applications in now for, for other places in California. But you know, um, this is a really small number of stations. There's 175,000 gasoline stations in the United States. What you often find is people put in their own tank and, you know, uh, like let's say it's a fleet or it's a state fleet or whatever, they get a tank put in and they get alcohol delivered and they just do it there rather than have it at a station. <coughs> um, oh, well, we're getting boiling water here. That's pretty nice. Pretty good heat value there, you know. And it's made out of, it's simply made out of an alum, two aluminum cans and some epoxy. And it's, you know, if you put four or five of those together, it'd be just as hot as your, your stove at home. Now you can buy alcohol stoves, by the way. Anybody who's ever been on a sailboat knows this because alcohol is the only safe fuel on a sailboat because it rises. Propane, you know, kerosene, et cetera, all go down into the bilges. So basically, alcohol stoves on the best sailboats are what you always find, you know, and so you can buy those commercially. They cost more than a normal stove because they're not as mass produced, but they're beautiful stainless steel, you know, stoves that are used for boats. This is just the first funky one I've ever seen. Um, okay, I've got to tighten this up here. Yeah, 